Hey, this is Phil from Explosive Films, and I'm back with another After Effects tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use the new built-in camera tracker builder After Effects CS6 to track your shot in all of its three wonderful dimensions. And I'm going to use Element 3D, the new plugin from Video Copilot, to create 3D objects and place them into your track scene. So the first thing you're of course going to do is import your footage and put some color correction on there if you need to. Um, this is a shot of a castle I took in Italy in the Castello di Broglio in Chianti. Uh, they have some beautiful castles there. Um, but you of course don't care about my holidays, you care about some serious After Effects business. So I'm gonna give that to you now. Um, so when you have your footage here, you go to Animation, Track, camera and it's going to start analyzing in the background so we can either do something else in after effects or you can relax a little so when this is done it's going to look a little bit like this where you have um, hundreds if not thousands of these track markers and um, maybe you want to increase the track point size so you can see them a little bit better i uh, took it to 500 percent right here and with these uh, track markers, you can quite quickly check if the um, if your track was accurate. If it wasn't, uh, and it was for me in the first place that uh, there weren't really enough of these track markers floating around, so you could go to Advanced Settings and go to Detailed Analysis. And this is an gonna analyze your footage again, but it's gonna take a lot longer or you can uh, change around the methods. So you could change around the, the, the chart type, or you can go to the solve method and change that. So, but when you have an accurate shot, an accurate track, you can create your camera. And what you also want to do is create some nulls to have as uh, reference points. So I want uh, my object to be placed around here uh, above the floor. So I'm going to choose this track point right here and click create null and camera. So this is going to create your, your tracker camera and it's going to create a null object here. So if you uh, go through the scene, you can see that it sticks on there perfectly. And um, this is a good sign. <laughs> Uh, so we go back to, to our, um, our track shot and we can make some more of these. So here's another on that plane, create null. Here's another one on that plane, create null. And maybe, maybe this one in the back. So now we have enough reference points for a good track. And now you can really check again if those stay attached to their points. And this uh, looks quite good. So now we can move on and put in our object. So I'm going to use a glowing black nightmare orb for this. Um, and I'm going to sh show you real quick how to create one like that. So of course, um, create a new composition and you go to new solid, uh, make a black solid and then apply element 3D, which is a great plugin from Andrew Kramer, which allows you to use 3D objects right within After Effects, which is groundbreaking for us compositors, as there's really no need to go into external 3D pro programs like Cinema 4D or uh, 3ds Max anymore, at least if you only do basic 3D stuff. So if you want to put in some stationary objects, titles, motion graphics, etc. And uh, of course, the main thing is the replicator. If you want to have some particles or a lot of particles in, in your scene, then that is the perfect thing to do. So Element 3D is a God gift. And Andrew Kramer does not pay me to say that. Sadly. Okay, so we're gonna apply Element 3D to that black solid, and then we go to Scene Setup. And here in the primitives, there are also some spheres. So here's a normal sphere, sphere HD, which with a lot of polygons, sphere low, but we're gonna use a normal sphere right now. And then we are gonna apply a shader. I'm gonna use one from the Pro Shaders pack, which is a great pack from Video Copilot as well. 
and you're gonna apply the glass cracks. So it kind of look, looks like a glass orb with cracks in it. Then we just increase the bump a little bit and just be a little creative here. So I want this orb to be a little evil. So what I did was um, create illumination, a kind of glow, and I used negative Fresnel. So that's gonna pull that glow into uh, the wall. And then you can also play around with the uh, Fresnel bias to make it look like you want. And then I'm gonna change the color to a reddish color. And what you can also do now is change the environment. So to something that looks a little bit like your scene. And I found that roof blurred kind of looks like what I'm going for. It has um, that, that bluish tint, we can, but we can also um, put the saturation a little bit down, increase the contrast maybe, and then we have some kind of a evil looking orb. Okay, so now we just click OK. Okay, so I'm going to show you the rest real quick by just clicking on stuff. And the next thing I did was uh, apply some particles. So I got CC Particle World and applied that to a solid. And then I just set the um, animation to explosive, velocity kind of low, inherent ve velocity rather high. I had another particle layer, I'm going to get to that real quick. Uh, and then I just have faded sphere as the particle type, uh, the opacity from birth to death. And so I had a color going from white to yellow. And that's going to give you that look of fiery sparks emitting from, from the orb. I have these, just these particles flying around. I have one layer behind the element object. So these are kind of flowing out. Uh, behind the orb and then there are some particles just you, you can see them um, real tiny here are these little ones that are more stationary not not so flying around and that just gives it or enhances that magical look about it so for the magical cloud behind the uh, behind the orb you're going to also create black solids and apply a mask to it very important here that it is almost round because of course i want a cloud around the around the orb behind it but i i just don't want it to be perfect because you want that organic look of of the object you want to make it feel like it's in the living world so you apply roughen edges to that uh, to that layer and that's going to give it that roughed up look as you can see here this was the layer before just, and then we have rough edges and that gives it that cloudy, smoky look. And then you're gonna have a fast blur and a CC cross blur, which gives those stripes. So we have kind of a distorted look around it and this gives it that evil magic feel. And then you just duplicate these layers. And now when you fly around it, you kind of have some depth in it because when I just go 90 degrees, they are set up with slight distance behind each other. And that's when, when we don't go that far, but a little bit around it, we're going to have some depth in that object. Okay, so now we're ready to put the orb into our scene. So we have the orb composition right here. We drag it into our scene and then we, of course, make a um, 3D object out of it. And then I want to apply it at this position first. So we, we um, tap P, copy the position and paste it onto our orb. Now it's a little small, so we're going to scale it up and drag it a little bit to the right. And then I don't want to have it sitting on the ground. I want the orb to float kind of above the ground. So we're going to draw it up a bit. Okay. 
That seems pretty good. But when we go to go to the scene, we see an immediate problem right here. The orb is in front of everything of the scene all the time. And if we of course want it at the beginning of this of this shot to be behind this ledge. So how do we do that? We have have to of course mask out the ledge to put it above the object. There are several possible techniques to do this. Um, the first thing would be to just do basic traditional rotoscoping, mask out this ledge frame per frame, but that would be a little overkill for this one. So the easiest technique here for me was to just use the roto brush, which is a, a great new feature in After Effects. I think they bought it with CS5. And what you do is you um, duplicate the castle shot and then uh, apply uh, a rotor brush here. So we just draw where, where we want the uh, mask to be. And this little much. So we need to take out some of this until it's correct. And press down all to do that. And this is about fine. And then we let it analyze forward. So we go to uh, three or so frames forward and then check if it's still correct. If not, we take out some of this stuff and then we go through the entire scene. So when this is done, you can see, um, I went into the rotor brush and smoothed it out so uh, we can pull up the smooth a little bit and I pull, uh, pull feather to 100% because we of course have these, uh, this uh, depth of field right here. So we don't want a um, sharp edge like this, but we want to have the edge like, uh, like the edge is uh, all the way. And this is 100% or close to it in this case. So you, now you can see we have the orb behind um, the latch. If we go through this, the orb stays behind the latch perfectly. Nice. So now that this is done, we can apply some final touches to integrate the orb into the scene a little bit better. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the orb and color correct it. So um, I go to tint, type in tint or go to color correction tint to get out a lot of this saturation because the saturation really pulls this thing out of the scene. It, it just doesn't seem to belong there because it's so, so saturated. So we're going to put that maybe to 50% or so, maybe even more. No, 50% is good. Okay. We, we want it to be a little bit more fantasy so it can be a little bit saturated. Um, okay, this is fine. So then uh, we can also do a displacement of the background because we of course want this uh, evil fantasy look where the orb is kind of distorting everything here. So this was, was an idea I had. Uh, so we get an adjustment layer, put it right above the castle shot behind the black orb and then type in turbulent displace. <laughs> I'm gonna have to credit film right for this wonderful little piece of art uh, who did some After Effects tutorials themselves and had some fun with turbulent displays. <laughs> okay, so when we have turbulent displays on this adjustment layer, we turn it into a, a 3D layer itself, so it, it tracks with the shot, and we want the position to be the position of the black orb. So we type in P for position, copy and paste it onto that layer. So now it is on that layer, it's a little small, so we have to scale it up. And then we can apply a mask. So again, you want that, whoops, you want that um, imperfect circle around the orb. And then um, you feather it out a lot. So you go onto uh, mask feather and maybe put in 200. Uh, and this is looking pretty good. 
Um, now we can play around with it, the settings of turbulent displays, of course. So what I did was put amount to 10, size to 50, complexity to 10, and then we want to animate the evolution. So you alt click onto evolution and uh, make an expression and type in time times 500. Now the turbulent displays is going to animate over time and it's going to look like the background gets displaced by the ore. The next thing we're going to do is apply a shadow. So if you don't have a shadow in your scene with a 3D object, go on, do something else, but stop making visual effects. I'm just kidding. But you're going to apply a shadow to make it seem believable that this object belongs to the scene. So we're going to get a black solid, turn it off for the minute, make it into a 3D object itself, and again, copy the position of the black ore, paste it onto that black solid, and then we're going to scale it up as well. And then we're going to make a mask. So again, we, we're having a in kind of imperfect circle. And what you want to do is, as it's not, of course, in the position of the orb, but kind of down, you want to draw a little bit to the ground. And the uh, further it goes away from the orb, it's of course going to look like it's floating higher above the ground, if you know a little bit about physics. And then you feather out the mask, let's say 50 or even higher, 100. And then of course you want to uh, bring down the opacity, maybe to 50% or so, 40%. Little subtle is gonna do the trick. And then another thing we can do is animate the orb to float from one place to another. So we have to move the black orb, the black solid, the shadow, and the displacement map. So we're going to put it, maybe let it start about here, press P, click on the stopwatch to make a position keyframe, and then at the end, we want to have it moving forward. Another thing we can do is apply a glow. And this is going to make this scene look even more fantasy style, more nightmare, more dreamy. So we can do that by creating another adjustment layer and then glowing, uh, going to glow. <laughs> Threshold a little bit down. Increase the radius immensely, maybe 100. And then pull down the opacity, maybe to 05 or so. Yeah, that, that looks good. And the last thing we can do is get a vignette. So that way, the viewer is going to concentrate on uh, this black orb and nothing else. So we make a black solid. Again, hide it for the minute. And then apply a circle type mask around the area. And then we're going to set the mask to subtract. And now you're going to have to again feather it out a hell of a lot, maybe 300, maybe even 500, and put the opacity down a lot. So 30% or so should be enough, maybe 50%, then that way you're going to get an intense look. But I'm kind of for the more subtle, so I'm going to go for 30%. And you can see this vignette adds a lot of concentration onto that area. And that's, that's what we're, of course, going for. And this is it. You have your track scene. You've placed the 3D object that you created into the scene. And it's looking like that 3D object belongs to the scene with a shadow, with a distortion of the background, and so on. So I hope you found this tutorial on how to use the camera tracker helpful. Please check us out on Facebook, Twitter and also subscribe to this channel. We will continue to bring out some great new videos and also some tutorials. This is Phil from Explosive Films, signing out!